Alrighty. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us, as always. Um, this is the uh, Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I suspect we'll get people uh, joining the call as we move forward. Uh, this is our sixth special topic meeting as it relates to the uh, COVID-19 virus pandemic. Uh, I, we're we're kind of hoping this may be the last uh, of the special topic cycle, um, and what we're trying to get ourselves back into more general meetings, um, and part of that really has a lot to do with the fact that the uh, the HC Sig, the Hyperledger Special Interest Group, has uh, has quite a number of other offerings, and uh, and obviously uh, uh, specifically we have th three subgroups, uh, and those are really taking a bit of a backseat. And so we're trying to trying to find a way to balance some of the work that's ongoing. Some of that is is COVID uh, related. Uh, but we're trying to find a way to balance that with, uh, with obviously the, the, the sort of uh, topic, the big headline that we've been dealing with for the past several months. So uh, as always, uh, this is a recorded uh, presentation and uh, also by virtue of uh, Hyperledger being part of the Linux Foundation, I wanted to pass along to you the antitrust slide. Uh, you should be seeing it here. Uh, please read through it. In short, uh, just be aware of anything that you share uh, here is, uh, this is open community, open source, uh, and so please don't share any IP. Uh, and in short, uh, be a good person. Uh, for details, uh, feel free to, to read through the URL that's presented here for any details uh, as it relates to the antitrust policy. Alrighty, uh, so uh, we'll do a round of introductions as we normally do. Um, uh, if you're new to the organization uh, or you're just visiting, it'd be great to, to hear a little bit uh, more about uh, who you are, where you're from, and your interest in uh, blockchain technologies as they apply to the healthcare industry. Uh, anyone like to introduce themselves? Uh, all right, Rich, uh, uh, shall I start with the region? Sure, go ahead, introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah you'll be our speaker, right, but uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So I'm a rich and uh, co-founder of Snapper Feature Tech. Uh, so I'm the presenter here along with my colleague Atul. Uh, so we have been into, we are working into blockchain space the last uh, four years now and worked on various solutions for different industry. And recently we have started working on a project in healthcare, uh, which I'll be talking about in more detail. Uh, so, uh, uh, it's mainly the focus mainly on blockchain and that two hyperledger fabric. Excellent, excellent. Well, great to have you, Naresh. Uh, and you. I, be I believe uh, you were introduced to us by Camlish, and of course, Camlish has been part of the uh, the, the uh, hyperledger healthcare special interest group, special interest group community for quite some time. So, thank you, Camlish, for that. Yeah, hi, Rich. Alrighty. Uh, anyone else on the call like to introduce themselves? Hi, uh, so this is Atul. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, good morning, Atul. How are you? Good morning, just good. This is good evening for us. Uh, uh, yes, uh, indeed. I'm in yes. India time zone. Yeah, <laughs> so the world is together on the Zoom. Uh, yeah, so as uh, Naresh pointed out, I'm, I'm rep representing the IIT Council, IIT being the actually conglomerate of uh, premier institutes all across India, Indian Institute of Technologies as the short form IIT. And so we are doing a lot of things for the nation uh, for COVID specifically. Uh, these are ongoing efforts. Uh, this is not very specific to COVID, but we keep doing a lot of other events and uh, activities uh, related to technology specifically. And in this case, we are trying to uh, bring uh, AI and blockchain probably together to solve some of the healthcare related challenging issues. Uh, and the starting point for this uh, is the uh, uh, hackathon, which we are uh, conducting in six different areas, uh, X-ray images being one of them. Uh, there may be another uh, five or four other different categories. So this presentation is related to that activity. And uh, as we go ahead, we'll explain the details. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you, Atul. Alrighty, uh, anyone else want to introduce themselves, uh, tell them a little bit about what they're doing and where they're from? Alrighty, 
I, I do see some some regulars, so good good morning to those. Uh, good afternoon to those uh, who are regulars to this, and thanks for, for joining us as well. Um, and uh, for those of you that are fairly new to the organization uh, and specifically to the SIG, uh, we do keep a membership directory, and I'll direct your attention to that now. Uh, this is a great opportunity to just uh, basically drop a, a virtual business card and, uh, and feel free to do so. Uh, what you'll want to do is get yourself set up with a Linux Foundation ID, LFID, uh, and there are details uh, sort of on every page that talks a little bit about how to do that. Uh, and once you get that, you can log in and edit the wiki page directly. Uh, and again, it'd be a great opportunity uh, to do so. Great, great, great time to, to sort of share and connect with others with, uh, within the community here. Alrighty, uh, so again, as I had mentioned, this is uh, a special topic meeting and we are focused on the COVID-19 virus pan pandemic. Uh, this is our sixth in a series. And, uh, and today uh, we're really gonna uh, have a great opportunity to, to speak to, to, uh, to, 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 to Naresh, oh boy, I'm tongue-tied tongue today, to Naresh and Nicole. <laughs> uh, they're gonna talk a little bit about their work uh, through Snapper Future Tech. And again, what you heard er just a little while ago, uh, the, the Pan-IIT Alumni Association uh, as it relates to the COVID-19 X-ray analysis. Uh, they're using uh, they're using AI and of course Hyperledger uh, blockchain. I believe it's Fabric that they're using. Uh, and so, uh, so Naresh, are you ready to go? I'll I'll stop yeah, sharing. Sure. Go sure, ahead sure, and sure. you'll sh share your screen, and we'll go from there. All right. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Perfect. Good morning, everyone. All right. Uh, are you able to see my machine? Uh, I we see you. All right. Okay. You're able to see my machine, right? So I'm presenting. Uh, uh... So, so just to be clear, we, we can see your face, but we cannot just see your machine. Oh, is it? Uh, let me see what happens. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. All right, so let me uh, quickly talk about uh, the project quickly. Uh, I'll just give us a quick snapshot about the project and then Atul will talk about in more detail about the project. Then after that, uh, I will uh, go in more technical. It's not actually technical, but what we are doing in blockchain side. So this project is about, uh, we started this project for X-ray image analysis using ai and blockchain but uh, the way we started working on this we realized that uh, this project cannot be we we can use this project not only for x-ray analysis we can also do it for any kind of medical image and also at the same time it could be any kind of healthcare records which could be uh, even your vaccinations uh, your prescriptions your lab and all of that so right now in the first phase our focus is more on x-ray image analysis uh, and then after that uh, uh, it'll be uh, covered all, all different areas so quickly about uh, snapper snapper is a blockchain technology innovation company we have been in this space the last uh, four years now and worked on uh, various products and solutions across different industries uh, in supply chain, healthcare, e-governance. And uh, our main focus is on hyperledger fabric. And we have done a lot of work on Ethereum side in the past. Uh, and uh, uh, we have started working on Coda too. But majority of the work what we have done is on hyperledger fabric. And the plot platform, the product, what we are going to talk about today, it's on hyperledger fabric. Uh, so what we did uh, before uh, we start, uh, we, we what we did, we started developing a platform uh, called uh, Snap Cert. It's a trust protocol for certificate. That's our tagline for this product. So uh, it's it was designed mainly for academic certificates in the beginning. So here, as part of this platform, what we do is we cover uh, digitization generation 
authentication, sharing, and verification of uh, all kind of academic certificates. But later on, uh, we realized that uh, the same solution applies for uh, uh, any kind of certificates. So the way we designed this, so here we can use the same platform for even for uh, healthcare. And uh, when uh, this project came from IIT alumni association, so we, we thought that uh, let's try this out. And we started working on this. So by simply making small changes, we were able to use this platform for uh, healthcare records. Uh, so the beauty of this platform is that uh, uh, we generate certificates or we create records, we generate records through this, which are efficient and automated in nature. Uh, and uh, whatever certificates or records which are created through this, they are permanent in nature, uh, permanently secure. And verification of the records can be done online and real time. At the same time, we are also recording all the verifications which can be used for audit purpose. So it uh, basically, the way we have uh, uh, covered everything, it covers uh, various regulations, uh, which I'll talk about in later slides. So uh, the same platform we are using for healthcare and uh, I would ask my colleague uh, Atul to talk about first IIT alumni council and what, uh, what are the different initiatives related to COVID-19, what they're working on. And then, uh, then I'll come back and uh, I will talk about uh, the solutions on blockchain on this particular platform. Uh, Atul, uh, who would like to take it over? Atul? Yeah, thank you, Naresh. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, you're audible. Okay, so uh, thanks for the quick introduction. So I'll, I'll talk briefly about what IIT Alumni Council is. Um, so as I, as I explained, uh, IITs are basically, there are multiple Indian Institute of Technologies all across India. And uh, this is a collection of them. They have formed uh, basically alumni association of some sort. And uh, as I explained, they, they take up a lot of other initiatives. So this is not the only one. So they even manage some of the government initiatives like uh, prime minister's visits outside of India, their management, event management, etc. So the last example was Modi's, uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, visit to Houston that was completely managed by this council. Uh, so I don't want to read these statements, but this pretty much summarizes our focus is always on technology, we being the primary technology institutes. And IITs are generally well known all across the globe. They, they host various key positions like today, uh, Microsoft's uh, CEO is IIT and uh, Google's CEO is also IIT. And uh, so they, they are they are pretty prominent in US scenario. Europe, I don't know, not much probably, but they are there somewhere <laughs> definitely. Um, so uh, so this is one of the uh, databases. Uh, Naresh, you want to take this or I can just continue? So I'll I'll, I'll probably continue because. In one of these initiatives, uh, we started setting up a very uh, uh, promising lab set up in the city of Bombay, which is high density, high population, and the highest uh, uh, incidence of uh, COVID positive. So we were taking up a challenge to set up a lab as quickly as possible. And we uh, started even uh, uh, creating a bus uh, which goes to the patients instead of patients coming to the hospital. And all this uh, lab setups, uh, even a couple of public grounds are now dedicated uh, for uh, the uh, quarantine situations, etc. So a lot of X-ray images we understood are going to flow in. Our expectation was about 3 lakh, which is, uh, how do you say it in uh, 300,000 X-ray images 
four day uh, all across the india we are going to come to probably a one central space or one uh, secure cloud and then practically it was impossible for radiologists to see each and every image uh, although the clouding of images was possible even earlier the ai angle was not there and then the idea of can ai do uh, covid detection also uh, came across because there were already some teams and companies doing tuberculosis analysis pretty successfully and globally we saw there was uh, this attempt going on so we said we'll just host an hackathon and collect all these teams and uh, it, it is pretty much based on the kaggle model uh, with some variations here and there uh, so with the scale of the images and the, the uh, scale volume of the data etc plus additional security concerns because this is medical images data all this combined uh, ex uh, the ai and the blockchain and initially as naresh uh, probably pointed out uh, we started with a hackathon and quickly realized that the images is a very sensitive data there were already some leakages observed uh, knowingly or unknowingly so we are now uh, this week itself we are uh, beginning to control the image data as well but today the biggest plus that uh, blockchain from snapper brings to our table is uh, anything can be uh, converted to a certificate can be shared can be protected uh, for access provenance and lineage all these uh, we can achieve with snapper's product and that product was the beauty of that product was we could initiate quickly morph it into what we wanted once i understood their core architecture uh, it was very easy to change it to our needs so we practically did that change within two weeks right naresh uh, yes you're right yeah. yeah so the other prominent goal mentioned below is basically related to ai so the criteria as we defined for selecting the team uh, there are definitely some statistical criteria uh, defined by statistical experts but our primary goal was to have zero false negatives so basically no covid uh, positive patient should go uh, out uh, without detection maybe some false can be taken in but that's okay and the other goal was of course to reduce the load and only or prioritize who we should take up for further tests the genetic test and other tests so all these kind of came together very nicely uh, they, so this shows uh, uh, some of the factors like uh, four to six days to show visible x-ray effect we knew this limitation that x-ray shows something uh, regarding covid positiveness uh, only after four or six days of infection and uh, we actually very uh, very much brainstorm that so how can we 100% really really take care of each and every case and practically that is not possible so we finally settled with practical limitations so whatever best we can do we will do but x-ray was uh, uh, advantageous in the sense that it x-ray can travel to the patient instead of patient traveling to the machine like rt pcr which is the gene based test it shows uh, probably on the first or second day the covid positivity but even there in practical scenarios there are issues sometimes it shows it doesn't plus rt pcr tests are charged heavily because all the equipment is imported even there uh, what they call as uh, the cassette or something each cassette costs heavily and they have definitely increased the charges seeing the market so we are even in the process of manufacturing something indigenously uh, that effort is also going on so a, t a tool uh, just to interrupt real quickly i think we have a, a question jonathan yeah sure yeah so just to address the uh, the challenge as far as the false uh, positive. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, the, the ground glass opacities are not specific to, and with the ARDS of, uh, to COVID-19. So are there other diseases that could present with the same uh, findings? So I think, um, mm -hmm. so, and, and I think, you know, uh, so I'm a physician and so I think, you know, ARDS is something you actually can spot in a chest x-ray across the room. So, you know, it may be this is a, uh, an association that you're going to find, 
because people have ARDS when they have uh, COVID-19, not that it's specific to COVID-19. And did you have a way of, of approaching that challenge? Yeah, so uh, actually we had a, a couple of meetings on this, uh, as I explained the statistical criteria and what classes we want to label really. So. Uh, so initially we started with pneumonia with subclasses as bacterial pneumonia and viral pneumonia and within viral we said it can be COVID positive or COVID negative. So and then there is TB and looking at the x-ray the AI can actually classify it as both pneumonia as well as TB. Uh, so that's fine we said so as long as any anybody having uh, pneumonia COVID pneumonia and still uh, not being identified as a risk. That is what we wanted to not to have. So if you do a multi-labeling or cover, sometimes somebody who is not even pneumonia, but he's kind of identified as do the test for pneumonia, or, sorry, for COVID, that is fine. Some extra work is fine. But anybody going scot-free is a risk because he's going to spread it out in the society. So I don't know, does that answer your question? No, yeah, it, it's, I mean, sort of, it's, and I think it's just the, the, the classic sort of uh, uh, T-squared uh, solution to this, which is that, you know, the x-ray showing negative of the person is COVID positive. So, the, so mm. that maybe they just don't have ARDS. So there's a viral infection, they just don't have the sequela in the lungs of COVID positivity. So yeah, that, that is absolutely <laughs> possible. And I mean, uh, honestly, I don't have the answer to that. Maybe the medical experts will have some, but we'll see what, what is the chance? Uh, is there any, some indication? Then we'll not reject the case saying that he can go out scot-free. We'll probably uh, prioritize him low, but do the further gene testing and all that. The RT PCR, etc. Because RT PCR equipments are less, there are different time delays for tests to be done. But we will probably lowly prioritize that, even though he's not shown uh, any signs in X ray. But since we, we, we combine multiple uh, symptoms, it's not just the X ray, definitely. Should, should I move on? Uh, hello? Yeah, I think Atul, uh, you should uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so some of these, these, these are some of the visible uh, uh, effects of the initiatives taken. So there is a test bus, uh, which I told about, which goes to the patient. Then there is a lab set up at one of the hospitals, especially for COVID testing. Then there is a lot of infrastructure uh, donated by various IITs uh, for HPC and various private companies also have volunteered and uh, donated some cloud infrastructure like Amazon and AWS. So people have come, for, come forward and companies have come forward in this effort. Uh, so the, these are the various categories we may be looking at. Uh, it's not just the X-ray, CT scan, ultrasound, RT-PCR and then there are some other initiatives as well. Yeah, we can go next. So this is the bus I talked about. So this has the, uh, the x-rays mostly and then they, they are transmitted immediately and then diagnosed within maybe next uh, two to five minutes. Uh, today, a lot of radiologists are doing this work. Eventually we'll be migrating, migrating this to AI plus radiologists. Yeah, next please. Uh, so uh, am I talking about this or narration? Yeah, so, so I'll take over. Uh, that's okay. fine. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Atul. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so so we, we talked about uh, that uh, we started with the X-ray, uh, X-ray image analysis using the AI. And uh, uh, the main goal was uh, not only doing the analysis, we also supposed to uh, protect the data. So, uh, not only data protection from security point of view, but privacy also needs to be maintained. And uh, authentication, the verification of data is very, very important. So here, uh, so what we did uh, now, we are working on this uh, project. 
So we are creating an integrated healthcare network, which will be used for efficient and secure data management. And uh, uh, apart from uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, HPC and cloud server, high, high, high computing, the uh, high processing computing, the servers are being used to handle large volume of data uh, for uh, faster processing of uh, the records or the verifications. So this is a uh, integrated healthcare network uh, using the uh, various uh, technologies. And the objective of this network is, uh, first of all, because mainly we're talking about the testing for COVID-19, uh, the currently the methods which are being used, uh, they're quite expensive, so we want to reduce the cost. And the test results should be uh, quickly turn around uh, with the faster, with better accuracy. And uh, uh, one of the major challenge when we talk about uh, the images, mainly X-ray image or uh, we talk about uh, CT scan or uh, different kind of images, Securely, they should be transported securely to different uh, uh, radiologists. So data protection, privacy, and uh, efficiency in the system, and uh, having the regulatory compliances. All of these are the objective for when we started working on this project. So this is the architecture. So in this here, uh, the top you see, hospitals or doctors uh, along with the labs or radiologists. So uh, hospitals uh, are the one who are generating data. The patient goes to the hospital and uh, they do the checkup, uh, do the prescri uh, uh, prescribe uh, the medicines or to go for different kind of lab tests or uh, uh, x-rays or CT scan. So they are the one who are generating the records the data so all of that data goes uh, goes to the platform and uh, we are recording that uh, data in the uh, blockchain network and then after that uh, the patient is the one who is able to view those records it's the patient's data and the patient is supposed to share those records whenever they uh, those records are to be used by any uh, doctor from a different hospital, right? Even it could be insurance uh, uh, company who needs to access the data. So the data is being shared by the patient. So patient, whenever he goes to the hospital, his uh, personal information, personal data, he needs to protect it. Uh, and that is where uh, we are using blockchain technology for that purpose, that uh, the patients are uh, given uh, a decentralized identifier and that is what he uses to share his information with the hospital or the doctor and uh, based on the request from the doctor patient shares his health records and those uh, health records can be viewed and analyzed by the doctor and then uh, they prescribe further actions on that on the right side, uh, you see uh, artificial intelligence radiologists. Basically, these are the uh, service provider who are using their uh, AI algorithm for analysis of the images. So images uh, are transported to AI radiologists through this platform. So hospitals are generating the images and they, uh, they go, uh, AI radiologists access those images through this platform. So this is uh, one of the diagram uh, in the next slide, which I'll talk about. Uh, so uh, here, all the doctors, all the users from the hospital, from the radiologist or the patient, the labs, or uh, even it could be insurer or regulator. So they have to be registered on the network. And uh, each one of them is assigned uh, with the ID, which is a, a decentralized, uh, decentralized identification number. And that is what they will have to use every time, uh, whether uh, creating a health record or accessing the health record. And uh, we are also recording uh, whoever is accessing the uh, record so that uh, we can use that uh, uh, for auditing purpose, whenever uh, 
uh, any regulator would like to understand the who who are using the uh, data. So this yeah. is a yeah. Narendrish, can I add? Uh, yeah, please, please, please. Yeah. So uh, when we say the data is getting added, uh, only the relevant data gets added. It's not like the whole image is going into the blockchain, but only probably the hash of the image and certain properties uh, could be classification, the label, date time, uh, it was recorded, etc. So it's only the minimal amount of data that is going to the blockchain, not each and everything. Yeah. Atul, Atul this is uh, Ravish. Uh, quick question. When you say only the minimal data is going in the, in the blockchain, uh, where are you in this architecture? Where are you storing the actual information? Is uh, it still the hospital or is it in a centralized place? Yeah, yeah so yeah, that's, a, that's a yeah, good question. So we, we have actually, our platform is very flexible. So right now we have actually two alternatives. One is the HPC cloud uh, offered by various uh, Indian Institute of Technologies. The other is a couple of corporates have donated their uh, AWS and Amazon space, so it could be there also. But uh, looking at the architecture, we really don't care. As long as it is secured by their uh, cloud security, etc. Uh, so we, we manage very well the other aspects, the access, provenance, uh, and other things. Uh, yeah. Essentially, if, if, if there are five different organizations, submitting let's say five different hospitals or different institutes submitting the information to the chain mm -hmm. you are just getting the pointers but they are also saving all that information in in their own cloud or in their own infrastructure and giving you the pointers for that not very realistically i mean we we have identified specific uh, storage areas so it's not that anybody is free to store anywhere uh, so it has to come because this is all government controlled uh, data. So it, it is coming to government controlled storage areas only. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so it's not not with the hospitals. Uh, they they send it to the specified areas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, so uh, also to add uh, Atul's point. Uh, so what happens? Uh, even the images are stored in a specific storage area which is uh, secured we also do the verification because uh, what we are doing we are uh, storing the hash of that image along with the certain critical information on a uh, blockchain and every time there's a verification happens of that uh, whenever the uh, uh, image is or the record is uh, exist so in this in this scheme you see the architecture here so on the left side we have hospital on the right side we have a ai radiologist so this is this is mainly for medical image analysis and the center we have a, the blockchain platform so hospitals are generating uh, the images and those images are secured in a storage uh, uh, hpc or cloud server and uh, whenever uh, analysis has to be done by ai radiologist so ai radiologist uh, they uh, they are also using a uh, very uh, specific uh, uh, cloud server uh, uh, a server where they put uh, they use uh, they uh, they put their AI, uh, ai algorithm on that and the file is transferred in a temporary file storage which is accessed by that ai engine and do the scanning and uh, spit the results and then the, those results are uh, uploaded on a blockchain network so when we say this temporary file storage after the files uh, after the results are stored on blockchain we immediately uh, delete that uh, file or that image which is used by the ai algorithm uh, so because image has to be kept uh, very secure. So this is maintained only in the secured uh, storage and uh, temporary file storage only for the AI engine to scan and, and do the analysis. And the results which are spit out by uh, the AI uh, algorithm, they go to the blockchain network. And uh, again, over time, uh, over there, every time, whenever uh, uh, any user, whether from the hospital, because hospital doctor has to analyze the results 
so they get excess of that uh, result uh, and uh, excess of the result also happens through verification and they even uh, patients doctors nurses insurance company or even regulators if they need to access uh, certain results uh, they have to be uh, on the platform using sign up and uh, they can uh, based once uh, uh, it is authorized by the patient they can view the results or the records so any hey, question the architect yes hi this is mike mccoy i have a question about uh, potential data duplication or image duplication issues. Let's just say you have the same patient with uh, similar images at different hospitals. How are you guys either combating and or uh, solving for that issue? Is it part of the DIDs that are that are helping to uh, aggregate those insights? Uh, or are there ways you're you're trying to solve this at all? Uh, okay, so I don't see there's any. Uh, uh, possibility of duplicate image because suppose one patient goes to one doctor or one hospital so that image the x-ray suppose let's talk about a simple case of x-ray x-ray is taken by that hospital which is uploaded on the secured storage area for analysis purpose so after that if the patient goes to a different doctor or different hospital then they will have to go for a different image and that uh, it will be new image and uh, again analysis of that image has to be done again because uh, the upload of the certificate uh, that uh, image would be done by the uh, the hospital who's uh, actually taking that x-ray or the ct scan so it cannot be done by the patient it has to be done by the hospital so there's no question of having a duplicate image so it's only one image at a time yeah, so uh, to add to what Naresh said, uh, we had some discussion about time series data because in reality, a lot of times they use uh, the image for day one, day three, day five and try to see the progression, uh, whether it is increasing, decreasing, etc. But uh, yeah, so each of that uh, will definitely create a different hash. Uh, this is what our belief you can say is uh, so as long as they have a different uh, property or, or different property value which is hash uh, we should be able to manage them as different versions or uh, different id etc yeah no so, so, yeah, we're yeah, taking so the, the derived the hash be definitely different uh, for different files yeah sorry go ahead uh, uh. sorry sorry uh you and you guys are taking the derived data sets you need an analyst to one uh, are you taking this information at rest or is this a uh, separate uh, secured image storage that an analyst would have to upload to then you could be able to to do all your work moving forward yes first it has to come to the secured storage area then only it can be transferred uh, yeah. okay. uh, to the radiologist who wants to use that and okay. uh, and that goes through a temporary file storage uh, yeah, uh, but uh, this is for the COVID case. I mean, for tuberculosis, there have been some edge analytics in action, uh, but that's not in place right now for the uh, COVID scenario because of the sensitivity, sensitivity, privacy, and security of those images right now. Hi, this is Jeff Stolman. I, I'm. What it sounds like to me is that you basically have a system that uses data where you control access to the data but the blockchain is just being used to verify the integrity of the data by looking at the hash is that correct because otherwise the the raw data is being stored in these you know aws servers and it's accessed when somebody has the right to access it they make a copy of it, although that copy then gets destroyed. But all that is kind of off blockchain. Blockchain's merely verifying the hash and the integrity of the data. Yes? Uh, yeah, that, that's just one part of the puzzle because as Naresh explained, there are DIDs. So anybody trying to get to the images, as I explained today, they, already they, we have seen some leakages and data flowing around. <laughs> Uh, so that will be completely controlled by blockchain. Uh, so anybody wants to access, look at the image, 
will have to go through his DID generation process verified by proper authorities and he or she will or it will have uh, with the access based on their role like radiologist will have certain way to look at the images doctors will have a different way uh, insurance companies will have a different way and patients will definitely so, so the creden the credentials issued will be tracked the, the data that's used to authenticate and and mm. uh, and authorize someone to use the data will be stored on the blockchain as well. Correct. And we, we even have a bigger goal, like uh, we even want to trace the lineage uh, of the data, where, where it traveled, if at all it traveled, how it traveled, and uh, the auditing cases, as Naresh explained, who access for how long. They, they, we, we also want to plan a duration for the uh, access so someone cannot access it infinitely, uh, but for a specific time period, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna use a smart contract for that or something? If you're yeah, yeah, smart contracts are already defined. I'm just trying to avoid that word. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. So it's, it's not only verification as uh, Atul mentioned. So data protection and privacy and auditability. So these are four different uh, points I would say here, uh, data security, uh, data privacy, uh, uh, auditability, my tracking uh, the transactions and also verification. So uh, I believe these are the four uh, key pillars of uh, the overall solution. Of course, uh, being a blockchain, uh, it's a trusted uh, platform. Uh, 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 no record can be altered or deleted and uh, it's quite secure. A any other question on this particular slide? Uh, if I, uh... yeah, Naresh, so there were some questions on the uh, chat and I have tried to answer them in my capacity. Uh, okay. It sounds like you could delete data. You just would still have a record of the hash of that data, but if it's no longer there, if someone deleted it, it's deleted. Yeah, so in that case, suppose uh, somebody deletes the data from secured uh, storage. Uh, mm -hmm. If the image file is deleted, in that case, uh, the verification cannot be, uh, at the time of verification will come to know that somebody has uh, done something. So right. action can be taken at that time. And even right. if somebody somebody goes, so the way it's going to work is uh, if some image has uh, somebody is trying to manipulate that on the cloud server. So automatically the new hash will be created and whenever verification has to be done, uh, that verification will not happen. It will fail and uh, will come to know immediately that somebody has done something and uh, at the time analysis can be done and uh, action can be taken accordingly. Right, are the we, logs we'll, themselves are mm -hmm. the logs themselves hashed, or are the logs just available to find out who was the one accessing it at the time when someone tried to modify the data? Yeah, so the logs uh, uh, at this point are not hashed, and they are not deleted. But coming back to your earlier question, we'll talk about it uh, when we talk about compliances. So, okay. uh, so if the HIPAA says you cannot delete anything for seven years. Then, uh, so the Amazon cloud, for example, has a provision where you can have S3 bucket, that's what they call it, uh, where you don't have any uh, deletion rights or you have only read permission. So in that case, your deletion case doesn't even apply. Yeah, so that's, that's what they're using here, uh, S3 bucket. Uh, like all the images are stored uh, uh, or managed through S3 buckets. And the logs are created over there uh, every time with each change. All right, uh, shall I proceed further? Yes. Uh, okay. So this is one slide uh, which I want to talk about is for the record verification. So we are using a self sovereign identity. So uh, whether it's hospital or the patient or the doctor verifier, anybody, uh, he has to have a credentials uh, on the blockchain and they have to be verified. 
so if the record is created requires the uh, digital signature from the user and even at the time of uh, accessing the record it requires the verification of the signature and uh, so as i mentioned we are using hyperledger fabric uh, which is a permission blockchain so we what we are trying to do here by having a did or decentralized identifiers we are trying to give a complete control and the ownership uh, of the records to the patient because the patient is the real owner of that so without his consent no record can be viewed by the uh, uh, by anybody in fact so that's uh, uh, what we're doing here so in terms of compliance is uh, we are uh, trying to comply with all international uh, major standards whether we talk about uh, worldwide uh, uh, yeah naresh um, uh, can yeah. i add something to your earlier slide yeah sure please so uh, this might be a little uh, strange for people in the healthcare domain because usually patient comes to a hospital and he just forced to sign some form that you give a consent to sharing the data and hospital indirectly becomes the owner of the data so here uh, we are trying to change that at least with the covid data which might be a, a, a milestone or maybe a drastic change in the healthcare industry we hope this spreads all over and patient becomes the real owner of the data so that that may be the direction where this may be headed yeah yeah uh, okay can, uh, oh sorry C could we go back to the previous slide yeah please hi uh for zero knowledge proofs can you go over the specific technology you're utilizing uh and or or how you are in, in creating that bridge between the patient to the the doctor or the verifier uh okay so here in this particular case first of all we are using hyperledger fabric uh so we are not using indi or any other uh, platform so we have uh, written contracts smart contracts so that uh, we are managing the whole thing so here uh, the patient would have the wallet the application uh and uh, whenever he creates uh, he signs up uh we are creating a did for him uh on the blockchain and that did is uh, of uh, basically certain information basically that is a hash of certain information which we, he enters uh but we are not storing that information that is personal information we are not storing over there so the only thing what uh, he is doing is creating the did with certain information and uh, also when he signs up uh, he enters certain parameters of physical health uh, after that uh, uh, whenever he visits the doctor the doctor creates a record of his uh, uh, health parameters uh, uh, it could be uh, his uh, uh, prescription or certain thing uh, or lab reports and all that Sorry, sorry. So all, I, I just, I just had a question on the type of zero knowledge proof technology you were utilizing for this. I, I guess. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Yeah, fine. All right. So we are just using hyperledger fabric for that purpose. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. So in terms of climate compliance, as I mentioned, uh, uh, so we for uh, we are using DID which uh, covers W three C, and. Uh, uh we are taking care of uh, hipaa compliances by uh, doing data privacy data security audit control and access control and uh, as we are using uh, the this uh, self sovereign identity we are able to take care of uh, the right to share and the right to delete so uh, as such we are trying to cover all the major compliances uh, uh while designing the solution and uh, this particular slide talks about the blockchain architecture uh, we have created a multi hosting architecture uh, where uh, it could be any cloud server so uh, there are multiple nodes uh, and uh, we are giving a node to each hospital also so hospital will have one node and uh, each hospital is created one organization and uh, they are free to choose any uh, cloud network where they can uh, have their node 
and they become the pa part of the overall network. So there are few nodes. Uh, so we have created the, we, uh, four organizations. One organization is maintained by us and uh, three organizations are for different regulators. So because uh, this is right now, th that is the kind of structure we created for uh, our uh, academic or educational uh, platform. The same structure uh, we are uh, targeting here to do that uh, we will have one organization uh, as part of that uh, uh, overall, uh, we'll keeping one node and uh, the three nodes, the three organization will be different uh, regulators. So uh, in terms of consensus, so if whoever is generating the data, say so hospital one, organization five generating the data, in that case, they will participate in the consensus along with uh, the regulators and the snapper nodes. And uh, we have defined certain criteria for uh, endorsement and, to, uh, and uh, for the ordering so that uh, we are able to maintain uh, a proper uh, consensus mechanism. So this is the kind of, uh, and uh, okay, so in this case, uh, uh, the hospitals, the labs, the government, they are actually, uh, they are the data generator. Uh, snapper and uh, regulators, they are mainly there only for the governance. So because uh, the data is not uh, ours, Regulators uh, are simply are there to make sure that uh, uh, compliances are maintained. So that's the blockchain architecture. Any question on this? Okay, so I'll go to the last slide. This is my last yeah, slide. So, uh, Harish, uh, going back to the earlier slide. Yeah. So. I think uh, we, you need to point out the snap sort part of the architecture, which is unique to Snapper's uh, uh, addition to the hyperledger generic architecture. Do you want to say what that snap sort really is? Yeah. So as I mentioned, the uh, the the way we have architectured uh, the whole solution uh, here, uh, we are. Uh, uh, basically, we are using Hyperledger uh, network, but oh, using the Hyperledger network, how we have architectured, that is mainly uh, using a combination of uh, channels and uh, multiple nodes on uh, different cloud server. Uh, that is the overall architecture. Uh, but Atul, I'm not sure like what is the, the question you're trying yeah, to Yeah, so I mean, the snapshot, snapshot part, uh, is basically the uh, snappers addition on top of default uh, what hyperledger mandates. Uh, correct, correct, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a snapshot is an application which is built uh, using the uh, hyperledger fabric network. And uh, uh, over there, uh, if you talk about uh, on the application side, we see because we need to maintain uh, data privacy and the security. Uh, over there, uh, the data is basically the responsibility of the data generator, uh, which are in this case uh, hospital, the labs. Right. So, so, so snapshot is basically a representation of data in a way. Right. That is yeah. that is true. That is yeah. true. Basically, each record. See, uh, so, uh, let me clarify that here. Uh, and uh, I just started mentioning. Uh, Snapshot is uh, from uh, uh, Snapper certificate. It's it's derived from that. So initially, when we started this, uh, our intention was to go for education, academic path. Later on, uh, the way whole solution was designed, architectured, and de developed, we found that uh, the same thing can be used for uh, different industries. And here in this particular case, the main thing is uh, once the record is created even like health record is created for the patient. It's permanent in nature. That doesn't change. The only thing is, the uh, only thing is we need to verify that every time. It should be secured. It should be uh, uh, accessed with the consent. So that's the main thing here. So we are recording all the uh, 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 
see it's like a certificate academic certificates when you're doing a degree a degree is created a certificate is created same way health record or uh, any kind of health record yeah so i mean that is the only point i wanted was uh, so you can create different verticals on top of your core architecture yeah so correct correct have correct education we have healthcare we have governance so that's very easy to do okay so i think we are running short of time you better move to the next yeah one. so yeah. this is the last slide actually uh, yeah. most of the points are already covered it just what summary consensus and, was used yeah that's another question uh, uh, what consensus was used uh, sorry yeah there, there's one question on the chat yeah, yeah raft. we can take we are, it we are using raft uh, yeah. raft uh, we are using right i'll right. write that. yeah you go ahead okay. with the slide okay so this is the last slide uh, and in fact most of the points are already covered so what are the benefits we are getting so so because uh, uh, data uh, personal data of the patient we are maintaining of that uh, using did uh, and all the health records are shared by the patient only with the consent of the patient uh, and uh, we are creating a, con a connected ecosystem so we are able to maintain uh, data integrity throughout and uh, data is secured and uh, provenance happens uh, because we do the verification of the record every time and uh, as you know that in blockchain uh, uh, the transactions the ledger are uh, uh, transactions are immutable in nature and also they are cryptographically secured so auditability of the data is also being uh, captured by us uh, in the ledger and which which helps in uh, regulatory compliances and uh, uh, data availability is there which can be verified at any point of time so it's uh, uh, it creates efficiency in the system too so any, any question uh, So I think uh, we are almost there. Uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, if you have any question, we can take up those questions. Well, excellent. Uh, th thank you so much. Uh, excellent presentation. Uh, just outstanding, and uh, clearly a good engagement with the with the with the team here, the, with the community here. So thank you very much, uh, Narish and. Uh, um, and a tool. a tool, thank you. <laughs> yeah. A tool. Uh, yeah. Very, very much. Yeah, very much appreciated. I'm gonna uh, if I'm gonna take the uh, take control back over if that's okay. Yeah, please. Uh, okay. Uh, just to close out. Um, so let me get back to the screen. Perfect. Uh, we just have just a couple of minutes left, and so I wanted to to just very quickly walk through resources. Uh, this is uh, part of uh, sort of the big picture as it, rela as it relates to those of us who are in the industry uh, looking to, to develop uh, solutions, uh, much like what we just saw here, uh, and uh, looking for funding. Uh, so uh, we maintain sort of an active list of funding support, both uh, globally and then here in the U United States. So I'll ask you to do a quick sort of walkthrough on, on these topics. We're not going to go do a, a deep dive on these. But they are available, and of course, um, really at this point, so much of the the COVID nineteen uh, resources are out there available, and they're quite mature. Um, so, if you have interest in continuing to develop uh, solutions uh, that relate to the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, uh, please feel free to read through here. Uh, I'll call out just very quickly some new information that came came about at the top of the uh, really the top of the month. Uh, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has two opportunities uh, for uh, engagement in the healthcare space, not necessarily COVID uh, specific, but if you sort of read through it, it's, it, it talks through a uh, pandemic and how to sort of respond to that. Uh, with that said, uh, I, I wanna thank everyone again. Uh, again, thanks Naresh and Atul. Uh, I appreciate it, very excellent uh, presentation. Uh, and again, uh, a quick thank you uh, to Camlish for making introductions uh, to get this in front of the HCSIG uh, team. Uh, with that said, uh, I think we're just about ready to adjourn. Uh, our next meeting is in two weeks. Uh, and uh, in the interim, uh, have a great weekend and please be safe. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, thanks a lot for giving us this opportunity. Oh, absolutely, yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, have a nice day, bye-bye. Bye-bye.